Hey, this is Jesse Canton. Man, I am so glad that you took the time to download this podcast. Listen, it's getting ready to be a blessing to you. It is power packed full of wisdom. Listen, as you hear this episode and you maybe you want to be a blessing to this podcast, well, you can hit me up on Cash App. Type in Jesse E. Canty, J-S-S-E, the letter E, C-A-N-T-Y, with the dollar sign, of course. And you can be a blessing. Anything you give will be appreciated. I thank you, and I pray that nothing but God blessings and his best be upon you. Take care. Hey, this is Jesse Kent with another episode of How Bad Do You Want Him? The year is 2021. You came into this year with a lot of goals and expectations and passions and new desires, but you have been getting hit with one thing after another. With this episode, I want to focus on how to overcome life's hurdles and obstacles. Can we talk about it? Yeah, man. Let's go. Man of wisdom, man of wisdom. From the pulpit to the podcast, from the pulpit to the podcast, to the podcast, yeah. Jesse Canty. Pursuing my destiny. Pursuing my How bad? How bad? Tell me how bad do you want it? This is Jesse E. Canty with the episode, another episode number 50. Man, this is number 50. Let's get applause. (laughs) Yeah, man, 50, 50, 50 episodes. And I thought about it, man. I said, what episode do I want to do? I asked the Lord on the number 50. And I heard it so clearly and just jolted through my spirit, spirit, get in there and talk about overcoming life's hurdles and obstacles because this is a subject that everybody can talk about and everybody need to hear. So it's going to be some basic things, but we're going to encourage you on this one right here. Now, so let me pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you right now that you lead me and guide me. God, help me be effective the way you want me to be. Help me, God, to hear your advice more than anybody else's. We thank you right now. I give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Listen, I'm going to be a little bit more straightforward in this one. Even pertaining that prayer, I just pray. I'm going to be a little bit transparent on that. Now, first of all, it's just right here. Overcoming life's hurdles and obstacles. As I talked about it every new year, we know everybody comes, most people now, some people have been through the storms and the rain so much to where they don't even make New Year's resolution. I am not against New Year's resolution. A lot of people are. Uh, I believe if you failed in the past, you should still try again. Uh, I believe that you should stick to a uh, resolution based on the word resolve. You need to find out how to improve in life. I believe that everybody should set life goals. I really do. I mean, life goals. Uh, one of the things that God have really called me to do at this day and age, I am right now for sort of people who are listening. And you could be, you can, I'm doing it. You could be uh, out of this country. You can be somewhere in the United States. It could be distance mentoring. I am starting up a mentoring program and I'm excited about it, man. And the thing about it is I want to impact somebody's life because I look at things I went through in life, things I experienced in life, and I dedicate and commit my life from this day forward, really from years ago, to be a help to somebody. And many people have goals and have expectations and things they want to do in life, but they don't know how to stick with it. And they don't know how to overcome the hurdles and the obstacles because life will throw hurdles and obstacles at you. The Bible says sufficient until the day is the evil thereof, which is another way of saying everybody who listening to me, everybody who has life each day has already got it set aside adversity that is designed to come against you. Some of these hurdles and some of these obstacles are things that is God have already ordained that challenges you must have in life. Some of these hurdles and some of these obstacles are things that we kicked over in our way and they wasn't supposed we're making life harder than what it should be. And we need to be aware of those things as well. But even through it all, God will help you finish your course and finish your race and be successful in life. So the thing I'm talking about, even as I prayed the prayer and I said, help me to hear your voice, God, because I don't care what it is you go to do. And I'm telling you the truth right now. 
if you go to do something, you got to be careful who you listen to. Go, <clears throat> excuse me. Guard your ears. You hear me? Guard your ears. Guard your ears because there'll be people that speaking into your spirit or trying to speak into your spirit that don't see your vision or that don't know your assignment. Anybody who don't know your assignment and don't see your vision, turn their volume down because it's God that gives you the assignment. He's the only one that knows your course. How can you know my course, know my turns, know me, know where I supposed to be in my life. And you still trying to figure out yours. It is impossible. We as parents sometimes try to do that with our children because we raise them and nobody know them better than I do. You going to try to control their life and tell them where they supposed to be when you still trying to figure out your own life. I think that is a human proclivity or human tendency for us to try to control those or, or, or guide those a little in a strong way who we love and influence. Or we try to influence them in the ways that they really it's nothing but God should be influencing them. So sometimes what God will do, he will use uh, uh, hurdles and obstacles not only to guide you, but to build you. And you, if you don't, if you're not careful, you will have, listen, I'm saying something right now. If you're not careful, you will have too much. You will have to, thank you, God. You will have too many people, voices in your head. I know what I'm talking about. I'm 47. I'm still dealing with it now, but I'm also hearing God how to maneuver and manipulate past it. And listen, if you got too many voices in your head and too many suggestions in your head, what you're going to find yourself trying to do is trying to please all of them silently and trying to be what they want you to be on the course that God put you on. Instead of clearing out their voices and do as Paul said, run your race. Finish your course. Put you some earphones on, some AirPods on your ear, and listen to what the Spirit leads you to do. Because one thing in life that I learned, you can't please everybody. People will get mad because they can't use you no more. People will get upset because you walked away from something that was making them feel comfortable. You have to do what God tells you to do. And I know we love suggestions and we love advices, but you have to bring it down to a minimum. Because if you don't, you're going to have the wrong people speaking into your spirit. And if you're not careful, they will not put you on your road to completing your assignment. They will keep you going in circles. So I want to speak to you. That's why I always pray now. I'm starting to pray more now. I'm, let's say it that way. Uh, God, even in this podcast thing, he told me to come from the pulpit to the podcast. He didn't tell me to come to the podcast and do what I did in the pulpit. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I have to let God mold me into what he want me to become. The only thing about that, if you do what God tell you to do, I promise you, you're going to have some people or some voices that's going to probably disagree or try to offer their opinion on what they think you need to be. But you didn't hear the assignment that God gave me. You didn't, you don't hear the voice that God is telling me what to do. So you have to listen to God. Now with this, whenever you start to participate in what God told you to do, you're finding your path you can expect all hell to break loose from time to time. It's a book that I read and it says that somebody is everybody is going through a life crisis every three to every three to four months. You either going into a life crisis crisis or coming out of it and saying that another way is everybody always face adversity in some trouble, whether it's losing a job, losing a loved one, uh, diagnosed with some sickness or whatever the situation can be every three to four months, you're going to face something in life. That's, you know, overall, that's what the statistic says. So what these things are, they become life's challenges is what I call them. Life's challenges wouldn't be called hurdles if there was no way to get over them. 
So when I call those things uh, hurdles and obstacles, I'm telling you right now, I don't care what it is. It is a way to get over them. The Bible said there's no temptation that have taken man, but such is common to man that God will with the temptation. He'll give you the power. He'll give you the strength. He'll give you the ability to overcome it. The word Nike, the shoes that we sometimes wear, it means victory and it means overcoming. And it's a word that actually came from the Bible to where we get overcoming and victory from the Bible. It's a Nikio. So God will give you the ability to overcome every hurdle, every obstacle that life will put in your way. You got life that's going to, let me tell you the difference between life hurdles and obstacles and the enemy's hurdles and obstacles. Life hurdles and obstacles are things that, as I say it, that's going to already come against you. Life will cause a two-year-old child who's learning to walk to scratch up his knee. Life will tell you that it, where that two-year-old child or three-year-old child learn to run, he's going to fall and scratch up his chin. These are life challenges. Life will tell you that a 16-year-old, and he done met a girl, he love her, and she's going to break his heart, he's going to break her heart, and you're going to be spiritual. That is life challenges. That's not something from the enemy. That is life challenges. It's, I can go on and on till you, get, till, you, till you go to the grave. There are certain things that life throws at you that are obstacles, that are hurdles. There are certain things that the enemy will throw at you. He can use your enemies as well. He can use other things that can put things in your way that is a sign to destroy you. The enemy will always come at you with something to steal, kill, and destroy you. Life challenges is there to make you stronger. The enemy's challenges is there to take you out. But through God, even over both of them, it will only make you better. So you can't run from these challenges. You can't run from these problems and you can't go sit in the corner and boo-hoo over the hurdles and the obstacles that you have in your pathway. Listen to what Ben Carson said, Dr. Ben Carson said. He said, success is determined not by whether or not you face obstacles, but by your reaction to them. How do you react from them? He says, if you look at these obstacles as, as a containing fence, well, I can't do it. I can't get around. I've seen people that I hadn't gotten five minutes deep in trying to instruct, encourage, and enlighten them on how to overcome where they at, where they already blurted in, where it can't work. I don't have the money you have. I don't have, and I'm like, if you keep doing this, I'm going to shut up and walk away. Because you cannot look at these obstacles as a containing fence. If you look at that thing as a fence, it becomes your excuse for failure. And you will start saying, well, this is why I can't do it. And you will come, you will satisfy. No, let me say it this way. You will extinguish every desire and every drive that you have or that you had within your soul to even accomplish anything because you've given yourself excuses. I'm going to tell you some of the biggest, uh, man, cancer eating spirits that can eat in within us is excuses. Excuses are like cancer. There's some cancer. If you expose it or if you allow that thing to, to catch, a uh, 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 area of, of growth, it will take over your whole body. Don't let excuses dwell in your mind. You are not the only one who've had it rough. You're not the only one who do not have the finances. You're not. There are people. I mean, I went on and on. Man, you got. There are people who have, was born with no legs, no arms, no father, no help. Don't even know their parents. We had a president, Barack Obama, who who was adopted. And he still made it to their office. If you look at these obstacles as a containing fence, they will become your excuse for failure. If you look at them as a hurdle, each one will strengthen you for the next. So don't look at them as a fence. Look at them as a hurdle. 
And I already told you that if it's a hurdle, then that right there is an indication that there is a way to get over it. So that is going to, each one of these hurdles is going to, going to strengthen you for the next one. So throughout life, you're going to begin, as my wife would say, you don't go through life, you grow through life. There are things that God is putting on my plate to do now. And I even called my mother and I was just sharing with her because they're my prayer warrior. And I was excited about it. I told my mom, I have no doubt I made the right decision when God pulled me out the pulpit. I have no doubt. My, ever since the day I stopped doing it, I, I hadn't regretted. And he's been speaking to me. And it's like I got new life. And what it is, is I have found the vein that God have turned in, uh, that God has, is moving for me in and want me to operate in. And uh, this is the thing about it. I have to go full force. You cannot sit back and, and, and have let the obstacles, because everybody got them. The lack of this, you don't have this, you know, you can't let these things stifle your momentum or kill your creativity. Don't let it, don't let it hinder you from imagining what on what move you're going to make next. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. God has blessed us to have listeners all around the world. And I thought to myself, I said, maybe there's somebody that wants you to have a prayer request. that want you to pray with them concerning anything, your family or whatever it is. If that's be so, listen, drop me an email at jessecantypodcast at yahoo.com. J-S-S-E-C-A-N-T-Y podcast at yahoo.com. I would love to hear from you. I love to pray with you. And I want you to have a blessed day. Listen to this success in life. And I'm not even, I know I talked about success in March. I was ever excited to get out of it, but even I'm still talking about it now and I'm going to do whatever God lead me to do. Success in life comes when you simply refuse to give up. You have to want it bad enough where I refuse to give up with goals. So strong that obstacles and that failure and losses only will act as my motivation. I decree and declare with my goals that God have given me in life so strong, every obstacle, every failure, every loss will only act as a motivation to me. So when we get to the place, and I'm talking about me and you, when we get to the place where we see our dreams manifested, where we see our assignments almost completed and what God given us, then we're going to be able to stand before someone. And when they ask us that, that powerful question, how did you get here? What that's, that's the thing I dream about the most when they ask me, and I'm talking about through humility, how did you get here? What was your role? That's when I got to get me a book another book and put it in the book form so it can say more even after I'm gone. <laughs> you begin to tell people the road you took because it's going to encourage and inspire somebody else. Success comes after you conquer your biggest obstacles and hurdles. That from Steph Curry. Steph Curry said, after you conquer your biggest obstacles and your biggest hurdles, that's when you will begin to see Something great breakthrough for you. When something bad happened, you got literally three choices on what you're going to do. You can, and one of them is not set back and do nothing. You can either let it define you. Or you can let it destroy you. Or you can let it strengthen you. That's up to you. You choose which one you want. Get in when you fit in. I'm telling you now, your boy fit in on the last one. Either you're going to let what bad happen to you, you can let it define you, and I never will let it define me. And I don't let, and I'm not going to let people define me. I don't care who you are and how close you are to me. When I start hearing what people say about me, one of the greatest inspire, inspirational things that ever happened to me when I made a mistake and I almost wrecked my whole life. When, I, when their words start getting back to me, 
When I start hearing people that should have been praying for me, P-R-A-Y, start praying for me, on me, P-R-E-Y. When I start hearing, yeah, he done lost this and he done lose that and this and that. When I started hearing that, I knew then I am not going to let what I just went through define who I am. Because with humility, but also with strength, I looked myself in the mirror and told myself, Jesse, you are better than this. You have to come to a place in your life where you can face your obstacles and your hurdles and say, I am not going to sit back and let you define me. I'm going to die one day, but I'm not going to die here. I'm not going to die this way. I refuse to do it. Don't let it define you. And I told myself and I tell myself today, you are better than this. That's one of my motivations to keep living. That's one of my motivations to even uh, to live better, to lose weight, to eat better. Because I can't die here. Not like this. I'm not going to let it define me. I'm not going to let it destroy me. Number two. No. Uh, I can't let it destroy me. I'm fighting for more than just me. I am motivated to fight for my legacy. That means what they say about me after I'm dead and gone and what impact I will make on this earth. But I'm fighting I'm fighting for more than my legacy. You should be fighting for more than just your legacy. The enemy not just trying to destroy your legacy only. He's trying to destroy every person that has been assigned to you to help. And there are people that you're going to help that you will never meet. There are people that you're going to help that you will never see. You will never even know. The enemy trying to destroy it all. Either you're going to let it define you. You're going to let it destroy you. Or you're going to be smart and let it strengthen you. The greatest glory in living lies. In living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. That's Nelson Mandela. The greatest glory in living lies not in never failing or falling, but in rising every time we fall. And the Bible says that a righteous, a righteous man falls seven times and then he get back up. That means you, if you're going to fall seven, then you get up eight. If you're going to fall eight, then you get up nine. You have to be determined that I am going to get up from everything I failed at. Jesus, since it's Easter time right about now, Jesus should have died on the whipping post. He should have died in Gethsemane. He should have, he shouldn't even made it up Calvary Hill, but he knew he had a goal in mind and he wasn't going to let himself fall short of his goal. I'm going to die, but I'm not going to die here. Cause this is not where I'm supposed to die. So the obstacles, the things that's put in your life as hindrances, they are put in your way to see if what you want is really worth fighting for. Do you hear what I just said? The obstacles that the enemy or that God will allow to put in your way, they are there to see if what you want is really worth fighting for. I heard a wise man say this, how bad do you want it? That's why it's there. Is it worth you clawing for it? Is it worth you stretching out for it? And doing this, you're going to have to believe in yourself. And you got to believe in everything that you are. You got to know that there's something greater inside of you than any obstacle that's in front of you. You have to believe in yourself. You got to know who you are and you got to know that there's something greater down inside of you than any obstacle in front of you. Some people don't want to hear this talk because they want, we can over spiritualize things. Just pray, just pray. I came boldly with a history of praying and still pray to God that prayer alone does not get you over obstacles. Faith without your works are dead. God wants to be strong, 
not just in you. He wants to be strong through you. And you have to understand that your obstacles do not have to stop you. If you run into a wall, don't turn around and get up. Give up. Figure out how I'm going to climb this thing. If you can't climb it, go through it. If you can't figure a way to go through the wall, then go around it. Find some type of way to complete your assignment. And I talk about assignment a lot. I don't believe you. I don't believe you're supposed to be a person who walking around without life goals. What goals do you have in life? And as I encourage you here, you need to have some of you may have to have get your mentor. Quit acting like you don't need no help. And I'm gonna tell you this: when you get a mentor, it doesn't mean that he's the only one helping you or she. Truthfully, truthfully, the mentor is being helped by you just as much as you are being helped by the mentor. The Bible says iron and sharpen iron. So when you stumble in the road, somebody is assigned to help you so it don't become the end of your journey. Again, them obstacles do not define you, but what you do in spite of your obstacles, that's what's going to be your definition. That's what's going to define who you are. You have to be focused that you can overcome every hurdle. I know it's not easy. It is not meant to be easy. That's the that's the beauty of it all. Is when God tell you to do, and let me tell you this right here. I heard this before too. And listen to me clearly. Because this is gonna mess you up when I first say it. God will never ask you to do. What you can, what you can do. No, I didn't mess up. He will never ask you to do what you can do. He will always ask you to do what you can't do. He'll look at a dead man and tell him to rise. He'll look at a man who can't walk and tell him to get up and take his bed, take up his bed and walk. He always asks us to do what we can't do, and then his power. We'll do it through us. So, therefore, if you believe and understand that, God will always ask you to do something that's going to be very difficult, difficult or extremely hard for you to accomplish without his help. Therefore, Philippians 3.14 come in now. I can do all things, but it's only connected through Christ. Who's going to be the one that strengthens me? If you're looking for an easy way to get to the place where you want to be in life, it's not going to happen. And if you find one easy way, it's not going to last. You have to go through something so you can stand in front of others and tell them what you experience. So it's going to sharpen them as well. But you got to have goals. Uh, I say this right here. God did not just put you here on earth to get saved, get filled with the spirit and die or wait to die and go back to heaven. That his plan is far greater than that. He has a place for you to be. He has people assigned to you. Even if you've never preached a message in your life, you never start a church in your life. You got an assignment on your life and life obstacles and hurdles is trying to dissuade, dissuade you from even accomplishing it. But I'm telling you, you can be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and you can overcome every one of them. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray right now that this individual God not only find Christ, but also find who they are in Christ. I ask you right now, Father, that you enlighten them, that you strengthen them in every level, every facet of life, God, that you reveal yourself to them. I believe, God, I'm talking, talking to school teachers, legislators, judges, parents, future presidents, probably, whatever the people are, God. 
I pray right now that you be strong in them and that everything they do be pleasing to you. Give them power when they're weak, God. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Nothing can be done without you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I hope this message bless you. It's just the beginning of some more things that I have before in store for you. Know that I love you. Y'all have a blessed one. Hey, business owners, this is Rashad Brown with Swipe Fast, located in Columbia, South Carolina. We are excited to be partnering with Jesse E. Canty in the How Bad Do You Want It podcast. Since 2017, Swipe Fast has been helping business owners like you save up to 99% in their debit and credit card processing fees. So if you process business to business or business to consumer payments, we have solutions that will meet your needs and would love to hear from you. You can reach us at swipefast.com forward slash save. That's swipe, spelled with the Y, or contact us at 1-800-597-0713. Don't forget to let us know that Jesse E. Canty sent you. Have a blessed day.